Try again. There we go. There it is. Okay. Here we are, 11.15. Let's get started. Let's make sure slides are working. That change for you? Yeah. All righty. All right. Welcome to our webinar. This is our first webinar focused on AI and, and the work that we're doing with this amazing new technology and how it's being implemented in Process Street and how it can help our customers um, do their work and, and make their processes fun, fast, and faultless. So I'm Michael D'Souza. I'm the head of product here at Process Street. I've been here for three years, give or take a couple months. Um, Ellie, you want to just quickly introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Ellie Mahoney, uh, product manager, and I've been with Process Street for, well, it'll be four years next month. So yeah, happy days. Thanks. All right, before we jump into uh, sort of the inner workings of the things that we're, we're building and, and getting into the fun demos, I want to kind of just walk through a little bit about why it is where we're so excited about AI and how it fits within our general product strategy. So it's clear that AI is going to be a force within all industries, honestly in different ways, um, in different applications, but it is, it's, it's going to be a moment that um, really transforms business and technology like um, really no other, maybe not, maybe even more so than the advent of the internet, depending on your, your, your perspective. And so, so <laughs> what AI does and what it allows for, and the way that we see it is, helping our customers and ourselves um, get that competitive advantage that AI offers. And that comes out in a, in a few different forms, right? Um, sure, there's, there's many, but the ones that we are interested sort of mostly from the theme perspective is, is data-driven uh, data decision-making, right? So AI can crunch through data faster than anything we've had the experience to work with before. And it can make sense of it in ways that are conversational, that help those that aren't maybe as steeped in that data uh, or even the translation thereof make sense of what it's what it's instructing, what its insights are, and how it's helping make decisions. Scalability is a huge one, right? Especially looking at how the market's playing out now, and you know how uh, businesses is being affected by things like the recession and what have you. But as resources become more scarce or your business is scaling at a rate faster than you can possibly replenish uh, resources or higher, AI is really um, a player on the team and able to be that flexible resource um, that can scale and evolve with that business. And of course, automation and efficiency, which has always been so core to process street, it's really how do we take um, AI and apply it from an operational standpoint so that we're driving better outcomes faster, right? Making sure that we get to the results that we're expecting on those recurring processes, and we're doing so with the least amount of lift necessary from the humans that are, that are actually working. And AI really offers a ton of promise in that area. And of course, like I said, the competitive differentiation. That's for us. Of course, right? And I think about that a lot. But it's also for our customers. And it's mostly for our customers. It's being able to take advantage of AI and its application to their business and see the potential and the, um, the advantage it can bring um, in, a, in a better, more documented, more rigorous uh, way through our processes and our workflows. So with that, we've kind of shifted a little bit around our positioning um, and how we think about ourselves and, and how we talk about process straight with the market and really kind of narrowing in on that AI process or AI powered process management, right? So able to take um, traditional process management, which familiar with process street, we're so well steeped in. We help tons and tons of customers uh, work through their workflows, drive their team to those predictable results, and really 
take that institutional knowledge, those SOPs, and make them actionable, actionable, transparent, um, and making sure that the team is accountable for getting those things done, those tasks through those workflows. So that's what Process Street's been able to do. But now with the layer of AI and the investment that we're making, we're seeing exponential potential in how we're able to add value and bring AI in as a team member for our customers and their organizations. And that kind of just wraps right back into our Process Street mission, which is something that we say often and we often refer to it's making recurring work fun, fast, and faultless. With AI-powered process management, fun, right? Like automate those mundane tasks and help the team get satisfaction in, in the results that they get. Um, you know, enhancing the moral, uh, morale and um, productivity. Fast, right? Nothing's faster than handing it off to a machine to bring up the um, those tasks, to delegate those tasks to a non-human member, to let AI run and help that workflow um, complete and with the results that you're expecting. And of course, faultless, right? So helping processes execute uh, without those errors and reduce the overall risks. Uh, some of our customers um, use Process Street exclusively for managing things like compliance uh, because some of those risks can be really costly. And we wanna make sure that our application of AI and its introduction into Process Street helps facilitate those use cases and continues to add that value and add to it. So one of the things that we hear when we're talking to customers about um, AI and its, its application uh, within Process Street is what about security? And one of the questions under kind of underneath that what as we have conversations is also not just is my data secure but there's a lot of uncertainty and unknowns around ai it's new right uh, we're talking cutting edge technology um can we trust it um you know how do we get to that place of faith of sorts uh in ai and 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 bringing it into application within those critical business processes. So one of the things that at Process Street that we've always had as core to our product is that layer of accountability, transparency, and oversight, right? That was from day one when we built the product years ago. And with features like approvals and task assignments, we can bring to um, AI that kind of oversight and accountability that is so necessary in all processes, but even more so with AI. I mean, not a day goes by, it seems like where a headline isn't caked with, you know, some story of someone getting caught or AI doing something foolish and making a company look bad, right? And so that necessitates human beings, right? We're still partners uh, with AI and will will be in you know indefinitely, uh, and so with Process Street, that accountability layer, those approvals help our teams, our customers get comfortable with how they can employ the the power of AI and still have the confidence in the results that they're going to get. But there are also other new security issues or newer, I suppose that AI brings about, and, it, and I want to address those individually. One is just data uh, security. So we know that our customers, their workflows and the data that they capture through those workflows, that's their IP, that's their data. And we are absolutely committed to making sure that none of that data ever gets used in ways that would train AI models. Um, this is an important call out because a lot of the tools that are out there that are freely available, that are being likely used by your team right now, can't make that same assertion or commitment. Um, if you're going to, let's say, chat GPT online, then you are helping to train that model. And so those questions that you're asking and the information that you're giving it is becoming part of that overall data set. 
Another one that <clears throat> comes up from time to time is cross-pollination. Like, are we able to segment the data within process suite such that um, it does not get used, let's say, in other workflows or uh, definitely not in other or by other orgs? So we have a way of creating segmentation, and this is the way that we've developed the product so that access to the data that AI is using or producing or getting is really up to the designer, the builder, uh, in the simplest ways uh, to decide where that data can be used. Another one is inference attacks. Um, so we use, again, the, the robust data segmentation, anonymization, um, to make sure that there's no bad actors that could get out there and um, essentially begin asking questions that allow them to build up a profile of, of some of our customers' data. It's, it, the door is absolutely slammed shut uh, on day one. And, and this last one is, I think, super important, especially as we're getting going with AI um, and you know, the use of it and, and really kind of understanding what's going on. And so we, we put an extra effort around our product in the AI features to make sure that there's transparency um, within what AI is doing so that our users at any given moment, of course, there's permissions to consider, can tell where, we, where you are with AI, what it's doing, um, so you can begin to understand. And not, it's not gonna only help with you know, getting comfortable, but it's also gonna help with how you tailor that AI uh, to do the tasks or, or what have you within process tree. So that's like a kind of the quick how we got here. Um, I'm gonna talk a little, just a, for a minute about our AI roadmap. And so this isn't like feature by feature, this is more theme by theme because these are the things that we've heard from customers and we can see a lot of uh, benefit for uh, the use of AI within Process Street. So of course we've already built the intelligent workflow generator, but we're continuing to iterate on that. And V2 coming out uh, next week, uh, Ellie's gonna demo for us. Advanced integration capabilities. We see AI playing a big part in simplifying how two tools talk and work together. Process Street obviously being one of them. Powerful analytics, this is really to the core of what AI can do. And when I was talking about crunching numbers, we see there's real opportunity here for AI to understand how workflows are built, look for bottlenecks, look for any kind of blockers uh, within processes and begin to help our customers um, make them more efficient, right? Suggesting ways to improve. And document processing. Again, we have a V1 uh, of this, um, but uh, Ellie's gonna show you a little bit of an update, demo time permitting. And, um, but that is really specifically about the workflow generation. What this is talking about is more making document ingestion and understanding part of the workflow itself. Being able to use the data within a, do a document um, for analysis, to pull um, values uh, from that document and so on to really speed things along or understand more deeply what's going on in that documentation that you receive as part of a workflow. And of course, process optimization, which I talked about, right? Understanding how process street works, how processes work um, and making them uh, overall better and more performant for our customers. So with that, screaming through it, uh, we're going to jump into demo time. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and let Ellie take over. Looks like to stop. Let me just. Page is ready. Okay. So these are some of the most exciting features that we've worked on to date. Um, and some of the things I'm gonna show you are literally hot off the press. So we're gonna to try to live demo everything. And if that doesn't work, we've got backups. <laughs> okay, so workflow generator, what am I looking at? Um, I've got that blank slate in front of me. I'm 
potentially somebody in the team or maybe it's yourself trying to think about how to start creating a new workflow. Process Street isn't hard, not hard to use, but imagine trying to create a, a process from scratch. You know, you want to do that brain dump and get it all in here. Like, where do you actually start? You've got things like task dependencies to consider. You've got multiple people involved in certain processes and deadlines to manage. So if you're wondering how to get started, we've actually made it really, really easy for you. By clicking into our little workflow modal here, you could create from scratch, but what we're going to show you today is the superpowers of our AI process generator. So as that's loading up, we're just going to have a quick look at an example of how this works. Um, let me just pull that up. And doesn't it always go slow when I'm using? <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So I kind of got that blank workflow behind the scenes, but now I can actually go ahead and utilize either the drop down here to choose a workflow name, or in this instance, I'm actually just going to type one in and I'm going to make it a little bit specific as well. So we're going to onboard for our Portugal office, funnily enough, because that's where I'm based in Portugal. Um, and you have an additional instructions field here as well. So feel free to experiment with this. If you've already got Process Street, great. If you haven't, sign up for a free trial and you'll have access to all of this from next week. Um, so let's go ahead and click generate and let's see what happens. Okay, so first things first, we're actually gonna start building out the list of tasks. So you can see that kind of letting you know what's happening in the top information panel there. So not only are we gonna sort of document how the process or how the workflow should actually be um, run and these tasks are sort of in order of completion, you'll see now that we're actually gonna be generating form fields. So previously you had to kind of go over here and pick and choose the right form fields, um, think about how they kind of relate to different tasks, maybe build them in one place and move them to another. It can be quite faffy. So you'll see here that each of the tasks that we're creating has actually got an instruction field for the person that's running the workflow. So once we've published this, we can run it and then actually fill in these form fields, choose from dropdowns and things like that. So you'll see we've got a variety of form fields. We've got things like uploading files and AI, process AI is literally looking at the context of this uh, particular process and adding those in for us. So number fields, file uploads, there we go, resident status. And because I've specified Portuguese, it's actually chosen um, to, to show those particular details there as well. Um, Another thing that I just yeah. add, interrupt while it's doing its loading, I wanna just add is, what we're doing here for our customers is really helping them get over the blank slate problem. You know, not everybody has all SOPs documented. And while Process Street is easy to use without question, creating processes can be pretty hard, right? You're thinking about different people, different tasks over time, dependencies, and all of that kind of thing. Um, and so that's not something that's out of the box ready mentally, uh, so to speak, uh, for, for just anyone. And so with Process Street and this generator, we get you past the blank slate, um, and then you can jump in and of course edit any of this and make it more tailored to yourself. I just wanted to make sure I include that, Ellie. Cool thing. I'm just gonna get rid of this. This is a little instruction field that we've added. So for those new people to Process Street, we just added a little tidbit of information there to help you get started. So this is really cool, kind of overcoming some of those hurdles. When we run this workflow, if we've got people in our team, we can actually select who the HR coordinator is going to be. I'll just publish and run this real quick, and I'll show you how some of these features that have just been added by Process AI um, are going to help you sort of get to grips with understanding Process Street faster, and also allow you to just sort of jump in and edit and go, oh, okay, well, Maybe I don't need that particular role assignment, or maybe the due date here should be slightly different. Um, so you'll see now we've got a stop task that's been built in. We've got things like approvals, and the approvals actually already select the task that that person might want to uh, approve as well. And then various different people can potentially approve various steps of the process. So we've got the stop task there. We've got dynamic due dates. I've been assigned automatically as the workflow runner up here. And as soon as we complete one of the tasks, you'll see the next due date appears. So it's a lot of the key functionality that we have inside Process Street that's basically been built for you. So we're taking that, that kind of pain away, that little hurdle that you have to climb to kind of understand how to actually build a workflow and what are these features and functions are. Once the workflow is then generated, you can obviously edit it to make it your own. You can regenerate it to start over again. You could try a different workflow name. You could add in some descriptions. 
And you can kind of see how you can iterate on that just in the sort of creation phase. But not only that, you can actually come back to an existing workflow and iterate on that. Um, and I'll show you in my next demo how we're actually going to basically use a different kind of AI to generate uh, information inside the task uh, itself. So if I just hop over here to, um, let's have a look at this one. This is our client onboarding process. Okay. So imagine this is a, a workflow that we've had in play for maybe six or eight months, maybe longer. Some of our customers, you know, have workflow runs that are in, in play for sort of a year or two, depending on the, the type of process and how long it is. So imagine that I've come in now and, or I've maybe even handed this over to a person who doesn't quite know how to edit workflows. They're not sure what to do. As long as you have a task name in here, you can actually click to generate the task content with this little button. So again, taking away that kind of blank slate um, kind of mentality that Michael was talking about, I'm not sure whether I need this field or that instruction or what have you. This will sort of get you over that hump of, of creation. And so what this is looking at at the moment is the task name and also the workflow name. And again, you'll see we've got quite a, a unique uh, sort of specific workflow name there at the top. So Client Onboarding Financial Services Europe, okay. So now we've generated our task content and we can do this in any workflow. We can go into any task in any workflow and, and do this. Then we can actually start to look at the content and say, well, is it, is it good? Is it right for my process? And then we can actually go and change it, add to it, you know, remove things, swap them out, maybe add a video for instructions and things like that. So the next part of the AI work that we've done is to actually take some of these instruction fields. So we've got a little process AI robot icon here. And we can actually kind of improve and iterate on the content that we might already have in our workflow. So imagine you're not, you know, particularly savvy with writing copy, then you can go ahead and say, actually, you know, make this longer, make it more formal, make it more casual, add to it, basically. So let's have a look and see what this does. And so this is our task instructions that we've got in a text content field up here. OK, so that's quite nice. But maybe because the workflow runner is one of our team, we want to make it more casual. So we can just switch it over to a more casual context as well. And then on top of that, we also have the same little robot indicator here on the email. So this is our send email widget, which allows you to send rich text or HTML for formatted emails. And you'll see this is the one that's been generated straight out the gate by AI, but we wanna make it better. It's not very long. It's not very sort of wordy. Um, let's go continue writing and let's see what happens. So again, anyway, you see that robot icon around the app and, and one of the other features that I'll look at in a second as well, and some of the ones that Michael will demo, you'll start to see that sort of robot icon and where it indicates the use of process AI. So in this case, we're thinking about variables. Now, variables in Process Street are things like a form field that we can then grab and reuse. And so each time we have client goals for each different client, that will become a variable in here. And when we send out the email, it'll be bespoke to that particular client. So that's super cool as well. And we've actually added a little bit of background color as here, here as well, just to kind of point those out to you. And then it's even got current username, organization and email. So that's pretty sweet. Okay, so moving on to something that has excited everybody that we've showed it to so far. Um, I'll just get my mouse up onto my other screen. Um, so AI, tasks. Now, AI tasks have been designed to basically take over the execution of repetitive tasks within a workflow. Think about all those times that you might use a third party integration tool to translate something for you or to pass out some information or to kind of change the tone. Perhaps you're already using maybe Zapier and ChatGPT to kind of change the tone of something and then send it back into another tool that you're using. So what we've done here is actually created the AI task, which is a multifunctional task that allows you to perform lots and lots of different functions. And this is just the beginning as well. As Michael said, with the roadmap, you know, we are actually looking at um, alternative um, things that we're gonna be adding into this in the future. So again, spot the little robot icon. Um, now in this process, this is um, basically an onboarding client process for Europe. Again, we're being specific. And we've got a contact here. We've already had our uh, sales team have closed the deal. So this is how the, the process is, is created. The run is created at the point of the sales team in Salesforce say deal one. And then this generates the workflow and it pulls through the details into the opportunity, into the account details and so on and so forth. 
then I can interact with it and double check the details that have come through. And then I'm gonna select the primary language that our customer is using. Now, the reason I wanna do that is because we are gonna send out a contract and I'll just show you some of the further steps down here. So again, there's a stop task hiding these so that we can't continue until that manager has approved that final step there. And you'll see I've got three AI tasks in here. So this, this particular piece here is kind of relevant to that. So Spanish is the language of our customer. I'm the account manager and you'll see the little robot again here. And then we're gonna send this to my manager for approval. Again, going back to what Michael was saying about um, accountability. There's always somebody in this kind of workflow that we can build in to have accountability, to check the details. And it's not all just generated by AI. There is a human touch in there as well. So I'm gonna to pretend to be Janelle, my manager. And then we're gonna see this little AI task starting to whir around. Now, what I've asked this to do is to actually write an email for me. There we go. Um, and it's written in English. But you'll see we've got Sylvia's name pulled through here. We've got her company, her name there. And there we go. I'm the account manager at the bottom. OK, so that's great. It's in English, though. But what we want to do is translate it into Spanish. So if I complete this, this effectively acts like a trigger in our workflow. And you keep an eye on this. It will actually generate live in front of you. OK, so it's, it's translated. I can't vouch for the quality of the Spanish, but I'll trust that it's good. Um, and what I'm going to do now is choose the date of the contract being sent, which is today. So we want to keep a record of that in a workflow run. And then you'll see here on the task, we're actually going to send the contract for signing. Now, the contract is in English, but because we've created this AI task and we can now translate the header and the, cop and the body of the email, we can actually kind of personalize that as we send it to the customer. And then, of course, I've been logged out because I've been talking for too long. Um, what's going to happen then is that um, we'll see the, the details coming through into DocuSign. So again, we've got the little DocuSign integration there. We've got the Salesforce ones here and you'll see a Slack one at the end. And if I just hop into my draft emails, we could send this straight away through DocuSign, but I always tend to send it as a draft just to double check the details before it goes, goes across. And what you'll see in here when it loads up is basically that um, header message to Sylvia and we'll be able to see the body of the email as well. So if I just go into my drafts over here, there's a few examples that I've been playing with, but here's the latest one that's just been run. So there's the header, again, translated by AI task, and there's the message. And then Sylvia gets the instructions to sign. That's all good, tick, tick, tick. And then this final task here is to just basically announce to the team via Slack that we've onboarded that customer. So just to show you real quick how this actually kind of works behind the scenes, you've seen the AI task wearing around, but how do we build it? What do we do there? So we've actually got, as I said, a couple of different um, examples or ways of using the AI task. And if I show you here in the editor, I'm just gonna go into the first one here, which is writing email. And then we've got two separate ones, email header and email body. So this one I actually created from scratch. And you'll see that you've got a drop down here. I'm not going to change this because it'll, it'll sort of error out if I try to change it. But there's a, there's a choice here of three or four or five, six different options. And I've gone ahead and written some instructions. And it's kind of like writing a prompt for process AI, right? So I wanted to write an email. We kind of added to this earlier and played around with it a little bit. We can actually go ahead and test this as well. So this is super, super cool. So we already know that these are our form fields. And you can do this with any of the AI tasks. So um, let's say the contact name is Elias and it's still Callister and the account manager is me. And then you'll see this button became available. We can actually test out what this looks like before we actually publish the workflow. So this is really, really neat. And you can do this on any of the um, process, the task AI, AI task um, options. Okay, and then similarly down here, you'll see translate. And what happens when I chose translate, it gave me some options here and then I just changed them up and put in my own um, variables and the variable magic wand is right there. So it adds the AI task and it also calls it translate or pass or whatever it is that you wanna do, sentiment analysis. Michael's gonna show you some more of these in a second. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of one of the beginnings of um, one of the first examples we wanna show you today of the AI tasks. So yeah. I'm going to stop sharing and hand it back to Michael. Thanks, Ellie. <laughs> Tough act to follow. All right, let's see. 
All right, can you see my screen? Okay, um, so yeah, so that was awesome. Kind of walking through a little bit of <laughs> some of the capabilities uh, with AI tasks, uh, Ellie was showing you there. I'm gonna ex kind of extend or expand upon that and look at a couple other different options. So I'm gonna start with here, the employee onboarding, right? And so for this hypothetical, this demo, um, we're using a, a ATS or application tracker, which is called tracker. Um, and it sends a notification by email um, when a candidate has been uh, through the, uh, the, um, the interview process and is ready to receive their offer letter, right? So this is part of the onboarding flow uh, for this company. So the first thing to call out is that I'm gonna go a little bit deeper with this one, a little bit further afield, I guess, um, in that I'm also using our email trigger, right? So this, we like to think of it as the universal trigger. So any uh, email that gets sent to this address will automatically run um, the workflow. And because I've placed an AI task in its first position, AI will begin the work immediately. So here we have, uh, we want to be able to send that offer letter, right? Um, and so that email that we get has unstructured data. And what we're doing with the AI task is looking for the data that we're going to need to fill in, the candidate name, the job title, salary, and so forth. So if I look at the AI task, let me drop into edit. This is how that's set up. So I've chosen parsing and it's data source. So I've got a field in here where that email body is gonna come in and rest, essentially be stored so that AI can then room over it and look for, um, in this case, email, name and salary. And I'm just gonna add another one because I know that we have <laughs> job title as well. Now we'll make sure that, that that data is available and its output is into the job title field, which is on send offer letter. And I'm not gonna spend time on the uh, test, but save uh, what Ellie was showing you works here as well. You can go into the test and look at the system prompt and make changes and really kind of get things working uh, so that you know uh, you're going to get the results that you're after. So while that's going on, I am going to send the email. Uh, oops, I might have done that too quickly. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so now I've got that email uh, on its way. And if I go back to, uh, we'll just kind of navigate in here again. Um, this is a quick little shortcut to the reports. I like to use that. And yep. Okay, so I've got one that um, I was testing earlier, and this is the one that just came in. So, yep, uh, you can see that it's pulled in the data, uh, the candidate name, the job title, salary, and their email address from the email that was sent. Um, in fact, you can see, I just put it here for the demo purpose, that it just, this is the field that it dumped it into that AI used, read over, and was able to pull out. So now you're taking that unstructured data, data and moving it into the workflow and using it through variables to fill in this field, which eventually you use not only to just, uh, not only can you use those variable names in the, the letter itself here, like Ellie was showing you, but also further integrations and automations with your HRIS or whatever the case may be, right? So now you've got that data and it's it's essentially broken apart and scrubbed and exactly what you need. So that's a real quick walkthrough of what it's like to parse uh, or to use AI task for, for parsing. And the next one I'm gonna show you quickly is around content generation. Are we doing on time? Okay, we're doing pretty well. Okay. Um, so. This one, I'm going to go a little bit further afield because I wanted to show or have an example of um, how AI is working across the different products that we have uh, offered in uh, through Process Street. Um, and some of those are generally available and some are still working through beta programs and testing and the like. But I wanted to kind of just show you 
the, uh, the walkthrough. So for this one, um, this demo is there's a content team and each week they're responsible for creating blog posts. Um, with the blog posts, I'm gonna choose a topic. Um, and in here we have the brand uh, and target audience, brand voice and target audience, because that informs AI and in how to talk or how to write material. Um, and then bringing in the blog post criteria. So the way that that happens in this uh, demo is we use AI, I'm sorry, we use Process Street Forms. So this is out there for the team to just fill out whenever they have an idea um, or they're in a meeting and they wanna record their ideas, but they can put in the topic, the brief description, the objective for the post and the SEO terms to use. Of course, you can change this to, to be whatever uh, you know, is necessary for your objective. And what this, this form is doing is it's writing to our data sets, to a specific data set, the blog post ideas. So you can see I've just filled this in with a number of different ideas. So if I go back over to the blog post, and I know this can be a little bit <laughs> uh, tricky to follow if you, if you haven't seen it before, but uh, stick with me. It's pretty awesome. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So the first thing we're gonna do is choose the topic. Now you can see this is loaded um, from that data set. So all of the selections here uh, are from the team's contribution over time through that, through that form. So it really kind of uh, consolidates all of that and puts it into an easy process. So let's say uh, for this particular week, we wanna do the smart home technology and complete that task. So with that data set, we're pulling in the other values from that row and using it to fill in the different form fields that'll inform the AI on how to write the, the uh, blog post as well as what our objective is um, and the SEO terms that we wanna optimize for. So I'm gonna complete that. And so now it's taken all of that data and in, including the instructions that we've provided um, as part of that content writing AI task. Uh, there's a different one for each. We have uh, blog posts, social media, and newsletter right now, and we'll be adding to those obviously over time. And so now AI is finished and we've got the first draft of the blog post. You can see it's got some markdown formatting in here. Um, and the idea here, um, it kind of dovetails or is exactly <laughs> what I was talking about before is that you can come in here, the human being takes a look at what AI has done, uses it as a jumping off point or creates the edits and eventually puts that in here. And then we can move through the approval process, right? So now the person that would be assigned to this task, let's say it's the head of marketing, comes in, writes it and approves or um, rejects it and, and rejecting it would let the process start over. Um, but making sure that there's that oversight and accountability and the visibility into what AI is doing um, is really critical to what our customers need and what I was talking about before with getting comfortable with how AI can uh, impact your business. So for this one here, I'll just quickly continue. I schedule the post, save it. Um, and I want to so let's say that day has come and gone. I'll say that it's been completed and we get the confetti. Everything is good, right? As rain, the process is run exactly the same each time. You get the moments you need to, to check in and, and make the edits, see what the team has been doing. But overall, the amount of time between the idea and the actual creation of, in this case, the blog post is severely um, uh, minimized. And so faster, more efficient um, production. This has also gone back into the data set this is a little sort of tip, <laughs> but I have the, um, the data set uh, that feeds that field set up to filter out anything that's marked as published. So it also has a bit of self pruning as well. So those ideas can come in and go out and the process kind of runs itself. All righty. That is the end of those demos. Ellie? Yep. 
handing the baton back over to me. Thank you very much. I'm going to squeeze this one in real quick. And I'm going to show you our importer. So again, going past that sort of, the, going back to the blank slate uh, scenario, we've actually built in this new importer, which you can access uh, again from the same modal up here. If you've already got your, docu your processes documented elsewhere, um, and you may have been running them already, putting them into Process Street will then basically turn or read that, that text document um, and it will turn it into a workflow similarly to how we just saw with the, with the generator. So we can add a file there and it will basically start generating. You'll see there the file type supported. And let's go for this one. So going back to a marketing case and you'll see the file uploading, it's not too big. And then we should be able to hit generate and see that start being created in front of our eyes again. So AI's role in this feature is quite subtle, but it's really, really significant, helping you to pull those processes into a format that the process tree can understand. And then again, you can go ahead and edit that and tweak it. If it's not quite how you would expect it to be, or if it's something that, you know, perhaps things are a little bit um, in need of additional form fields or what have you, you've got there the bare bones of, of that process imported. And then you can start to add things like the conditional logic, the automations, some of the triggers that Michael showed you earlier. Maybe, you know, when this run work, workflow is complete, you can then spit that back out into a data set or a Google sheet or Slack message or whatever it is you want to do. So I won't let you sort of go through the pain of having to sit here watching another workflow be generated. Well, not the pain, the fun, I should say. Um, but yeah, if you already have a process that you want to import into Process Street, then this is a really, really quick way to do that. Okay. I'm going to hand back to Michael now. And yep, let's go on from there. All righty. Thanks, Ellie. Uh, so just an update on what you've seen today. So these are the things that we're, we're working on uh, right now. Uh, we're going to begin the phased rollout for both the workflow generator and process import beta two. So these are live uh, right now, uh, but they're the V1. So we've made significant improvement on the results, uh, being able to add variables, assignees, um, as well as tailor the, the generation with that description field that, that Ellie showed. And AI tasks beta one uh, will also roll out starting next week, or that's our target. Um, and to begin with, we're gonna have content writing like I said, the blog post, social media, newsletter, uh, transforming. So that's going to be parsing and translation, along with analyze, which we didn't get a chance to demo, uh, but that allows you to summarize, uh, get the sentiment of, or a thematic breakdown of content that you have in your workflow. And of course, we have custom. Customs blank slate, jump in there and um, see what you can do. Um, we're always interested to hear about new uh, new ways that AI can be applied for workflows. And oop, with that, we can actually get to the Q&A. So we've got some stuff here to answer. So starting with Brandon uh, Miller, talked about uh, training AI and the issues that are related to IP, understood and appreciated. However, when we are creating the processes in the most recent example of creating a workflow, we'll consider information about our company and other workflows that already exist in our process. So this goes to um, what I touched on a little bit around with security. It is explicit security uh, or explicit permission. So it can absolutely um, know about your company uh, data from other workflows, but the way that we've engineered it for that security consideration is to have that be an ex, uh, explicit grant, meaning that you might use data sets or variables uh, to pass that information around so that you're never inadvertently um, giving access to something sensitive within a workflow that you may not want to, right? So it was one of the, probably where we spent uh, a significant one of the more significant amounts of time deciding on how we want to make sure that if you're you're running a process uh, that allows people to input AI, they can't use the AI to say sniff around another workflow where 
you know, salary information might be or something like that. So right now our model is explicit grant only, and we're likely to stay there because we feel like that's the, the way that we can help, um, help our customers not inadvertently uh, expose something that they, they don't want to. Uh, let's see, oh, it's jumping all around. Um, Sorry, yeah, that was me just uh, closing some out that you just answered. Is this chapter okay. three, four from Crispiness? We are currently using 3.5 Turbo uh, for most of what we're doing, along with some other uh, technologies like La uh, Langchain um, to, to do what we're doing. Uh, but we are testing with GPT-4 and I expect to, to move in that direction as soon as that becomes generally available. Uh, through the API. How does the company make AI more transparent and explainable? Can I check it out as a user? Yeah, so the way that we are, um, we're doing that uh, is through that test mode where you can actually jump in and see the system prompts and the exchanges between uh, Process Street and AI on your behalf, right? So nothing is happening completely blind. Um, of course, you don't have to jump in there and look at it because it could be maybe confusing or overwhelming to some, uh, but it is there and you can see how it is that we are uh, using or utilizing AI to generate the answers that you know, your AI task is, is requiring. And you can absolutely check that out as soon as the AI task rolls up next week. You have a method for fact checking and what and how does it work? Um, again, so AI will have some hallucinations. Uh, that's just nature of the technology, right? It's, it's, it's widely publicized. For instance, um, if ever it writes a link into um, a blog post, it, you view it with skepticism, right? So um, what we do on our end is we are aware and constantly staying up to date on common hallucinations, right? Um, we don't call them mistakes. Uh, and we, we do our best to make sure that they're excluded from our result set. So minimize the amount of oversight required, but still give our, our users the ability to do so, like I was showing with the blog post. You can read it through, make sure everything's good. But ultimately, um, you know, the human in the loop here is part of the value of Process Street in the adoption of AI. We do expect that we can move things a lot further, a lot faster, but it's always good practice to, uh, to double check. And that's why we set up approvals where we do or show the result of AI in field so that you can take a look and somebody can essentially thumbs up or thumbs down or make those edits. Which plans How is... Oh, sorry, go on. Oh, <laughs> no, go ahead. Uh, which plans is process AI included in? Um, yeah, so uh, as we already mentioned, the rollout to everybody for all these latest updates will happen from next week. But if you actually sign up or if you have joined the beta already, you have beta access to versions one and version two coming next week. For everybody else, if you sign up for a trial right now, if you don't already have a Process Street account, you automatically have access to the beta. So you can start playing around with the, the previous version of that and then full rollout will start next week. So hopefully by, the, by Friday, all being well. All plans and all customers will have access to process AI and all the stuff that we've showed you today. Yeah, uh, yeah. Across all plans, um, we may make some changes to how those plans are structured uh, and the amount of consumption. But right now, while we're in beta, we just want to see how it's going to be used and um, what kind of volume we're looking at. And then we need to make, obviously, some considerations as it might relate to pricing uh, down the road, but that's not something that we're doing during the beta periods. Um, all right, so how customizable are the workflows for the blog posts and SEO? Can we add other variables? Oh yeah, you can add uh, as many variables as you'd like, form fields to inform them further. We just start you off with a base set more as a, this is a, a good practice, uh, but you can absolutely change them, remove them, edit them, add them to your workflow. Um, you can even start anew, right, from scratch. It's just uh, the, um, the prompt library, as it were, is a kind of get you started. But of course, we expect that our customers are going to make changes there and, and make updates. 
how customizable are, okay, that's that one. Uh, is it better to wait before starting the free trial until after July 3rd to make it easier to understand the new features from day one? No, I would jump right in. Uh, we're not too far out anyway. Um, and if you'd like, um, go ahead and just message us uh, and we can get you on to the earlier beta if that's your consideration. There's no, no sense in waiting and that goes for anybody as well. Um, if you're not already in that beta program, uh, where we're in the late stages of beta one, we're pretty much just open it up uh, to anybody who wants to raise their hand at this point. Yeah, and I just want to call out as well that if you do need help with that, or if you want one of our support team to kind of walk you through it, or you've got a little bit hung up creating something, our support team are world class. And I'm not just saying that because Tarek, their boss, is on this call as well. They answer your calls um, or questions within five minutes on average, which is super good. And you can get on a live demo with them and they can actually walk you through it. And it'll be a one-to-one -one demo where you can ask as many questions as you like. You can bring colleagues with you if you want to have a little team chat. Um, so do, do make use of that. You can reach out to them on support at protest.st. Awesome. Uh, any concept of adding additional instructions after the first, first process generation on the roadmap? For example, if AI generates a process, but you notice some tweaks, like you want to make looks good, but please change ABC to XYZ. I, I use... This often with ChatGPT, usually it doesn't get it right the first time. Yeah, um, that's not something that we have in the immediate future, but that makes a lot of sense, right? I use ChatGPT all the time. I'm often uh, kind of grooming out how I'm having those conversations. For the AI tasks, of course, you can do that because you have that test mode. Um, but with um, the workflow generator, uh, you would have to go through the, the full generation and then hit retry uh, or retry it and add additional uh, information into the description field to try and kind of meld it uh, closer to what you're after. But uh, explicit instructions like that, super interesting. I think it's something we can take a look at. Will AI also be able to handle conditional logic? Can I use it to speed up creating conditional logic? Um, not directly, not yet. That is also something that's a common request. Um, I think that's something that it's uh, pretty complicated pretty quickly. Uh, so it's probably a little ways away, if I'm honest. But um, I will say that um, we've already seen users um, using AI in creative ways that lessen the need for conditional logic. Uh, and that's something that we can jump on a demo and show you at some point. Thank All right. You, Thank you for coming. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, everyone. I think we get to the bottom of the questions. Does anyone else yeah. have any more? Oh, there we go, Brandon. Are there any more thoughts or ways that we can use AI to expand or delve deeper into the knowledge base? That's a really good question. We actually yeah. did a, a process AI hackathon just before this sort of latest round of, of development work that we were doing. And one of the team actually, and correct me if I'm not answering your question correctly, um, is sort of like a, a, um, asking a question in our help button, which actually then feeds you some of the information that you need. Instead of having to go into our knowledge base and open it up in full screen, come two tabs open, then potentially, yes, we have experimented with that already. It was Hackathon, um, but one of those Hackathon projects, the AI importer actually made it through, and you'll see that obviously in, in some of the things that we've showed you today. So potentially. Um, and just on another subject as well, someone just asked about conditional logic. There might be a way that we could just sort of use that at the moment as well, or use process AI to suggest where you can add automations. So that could be something that we're looking to in the future as well. But um, yeah, for, for later work at this stage. Awesome. What else we got? Any other thoughts on ways to use AI? Oh, no. OK. Um, all right. So is there a replacement for existing? OK, I see that's a two part question. So um, Process Street, uh, how do we explain that? Process Street uses AI um, to manage and automate business processes um, for operational efficiency, quality, and compliance, right? So anything where you're expecting an outcome uh, and you need uh, to work across different people in the team uh, operations, then that's where Process Street has a really strong um, value to the companies, right? Um, or brings a lot of value for, for our customers. Uh, as far as replacing existing business applications, we have customers that use us for everything from um, a knowledge base to like, what's the other end? Probably a CRM type uh, uh, workflow. And 
of course, we probably displace <laughs> um, spreadsheets more than anything, right? Um, a lot of processes out there are documented in spreadsheets, and so uh, that also happens. But if you want to have that oversight, that transparency, the accountability in your processes, if you've moved beyond the stage of, yeah, we documented this process, go, here's a link to go read it, hope people actually follow it, then that's what process streets for, right? Making sure that the work you need to get done gets done the way you need it to get done. Will you be able to inject AI tasks into existing workflows? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, how will you find people? How do you find people integrate regular daily tasks and project management with Process Street? Um, Ellie, maybe you got a better feel for that. Yeah. So regular regular tasks. I mean recurring tasks is is what process street is all about right so our workflows are reusable iter iterative um and you can basically use those to run projects to do whatever daily tasks you need to do for all different departments so i know we've showed you some examples of you know sort of hr employee onboarding and things like that today it's important to note that you can literally use process street for any any department any use case you can possibly imagine if it's a repeatable process you, that you want to kind of capture information in and you want to have, you know, sort of conditional logic and things that change based on different situations, then that that's how I'd sort of say that we use uh, Process Street for, you know, sort of recurring daily tasks, weekly tasks. You can schedule things to run on an annual basis, quarterly basis. Um, and then once you start sort of building in those automations and integrations, you can do limitless things with them um, and integrate them with not only just our features, but features and, and other products and other tools as well. I think that's probably the most important call out for the second part of Sharon's question is, you know, the team's resisting using Process Street because it's one more place to look. We integrate with so many different platforms uh, in so many different ways. Uh, one of our goals is to make sure that our customers and their team can do the work where they're doing work. So if they use Slack, we can do it there. If they use Teams, it can be done there. Through webhooks and other integrations, a lot of the tasks can be handed off, completed, and updated in those ways. So we're really trying to be cognizant of not just adding to the noise, but also um, giving the business what it needs and that sort of predictability and the users the ability to work in the ways that they're most familiar with. Right. Um, eventually, we you know obviously we we hope and expect that they'll. Um, look and find value in Process Street for other processes and begin to utilize it there. But if they're simply doing tests, there's a number of different ways we can tackle that. What's the best knowledge reference to master Process Street like me or Ellie? <laughs> Our help docs are awesome. Uh, they're, they're, they're really great. Uh, you definitely can get in there, schedule a call uh, with uh, our support team. They're awesome at helping people get started. Um, it really kind of depends on what your your um, your preferred method of learning is. Uh, we've also got a ton of videos out there uh, that you can search for. that can really help you get going. Can I take the next um, one? Garrett, any plans to have AI generate process documentation, for example, diagrams, decision trees, et cetera, to clarify on existing workflow runs in process tree? Um, yeah, this is one of our biggest, uh, well, a, a very popular request for feature requests. Um, so not at the moment, um, but who knows, um, as we're sort of developing the work that we're doing and the projects that we're sort of including in Process AI, who knows? Um, for the moment, though, no, but I'll definitely take that as a, as a feature request. Thanks, Garrett. Mm -hmm. Um, Chris, will I be able to prompt the workflow generator to pull from XYZ workflows specifically for its data set, the workflow generator? Oh, I see at the point of generation, I think you mean Chris. Um, not at the moment, but if you think back to the example that Michael showed where he actually had a data set already connected to a dropdown. So we have that linked dynamic dropdown inside the workflow, then um, that would be something that you would actually need to build in yourself. So again, another great suggestion for a feature request, maybe as we get cleverer with, you know, the instructions and the prompts and how we're actually constructing those generated workflows, that could be something that we look at in the future as well. Good question. Mm, yeah, that is a good one. 
trying to think, is there a workaround to actually make that happen? I can't think of one at the moment, but it's very interesting. Uh, is Will there be a feature to track employee time spent doing tasks? Um, not, not, not just yet. We've heard that a few times. Um, we want to be able to make that as automated as possible. Uh, and there are some limitations within the product that, that prevent that, like tasks not necessarily having a start time uh, to begin. Uh, but we will be using the data at some point in the future with things like how long tasks take to complete within a singular workflow to have AI uh, apply to that and, and provide insights and analytics on um, you know, how you might optimize that workflow. How do we clean up multiple variables tied to conditional formatting with AI? I'm not sure what's meant by that one particular. Do you have an idea? Um, ask here. Yeah, Luke, do you have the, uh, any other details to add to that? The only thing I can think of is conditional formatting. Conditional formatting. Oh, I see loops. So you have really complicated workflows and wondering how to use AI. Um, I definitely wouldn't start with an in-production, uh, in-use workflow right now. If you want to test this out and play with it, definitely have one in your private library or something that isn't, um, maybe even take a copy, make a copy of the existing one that you've got um, and have a play around with it from there. Um, as we've shown you earlier, you can sort of test things before you publish them. But if it is a super complex one with lots of conditional logic and lots of other things happening within it, then probably just sort of take it offline, put it in your private library and have a play with it there first. Um, but yeah, you could potentially add on, reiterate text, email widgets, um, add in new tasks and use the task generator that we showed right at the beginning um, and or use the AI task generator as well. So there's lots of different ways that you could use uh, process AI and actually inject that into your existing workflows. I hope that helps. Okay, we are out of time. I wanna quickly just grab a last couple of questions and then I think we'll close it out. So Sharon, you're asking if there's anybody uh, we can recommend that helped build out these processes, definitely reach out to our support team and they'll put you in, um, in contact. We have a consu uh, solutions consulting team that does that very thing. So absolutely, it's part of, uh, on the services that we offer. Um, if you can't find the AI uh, uh, features, you can email us, we can put you in the beta or they'll be available starting next week with the rollout. Um, can the new AI capabilities help me automate parts of my existing process street processes? Absolutely. Um, go in there and uh, once that feature is live for you, you can start generating tasks and task content and, and content within widgets and, and the like, what Ellie was showing, so absolutely. Um, I send, okay. Okay, I think yeah. that's that's it. I think we'll, we'll call oh, it. If you've got any more questions, you've got our email in front of you on the screen here. Absolutely use them. And we want to, also, thank you all. And if you've got feedback for us about the feature, the presentation, or otherwise, you've got this link here. We'll send this out. Um, awesome. Thank you all so much. Really appreciate it. Again, if we didn't get a chance to answer your questions, please do email us. Uh, we will respond. Thank you. Thank you very much. See you next time.